Shabbat Shalom and welcome to SDI, Suomi Torah International Shabbat Meeting. We have big family on here with us today and uh, we go. We are going through uh, Torah portion Teruma, what means heap offering, and the Torah portion is Exodus 25 to 27, and uh, prophets are 1 King 5 to 6, Jeremiah 33, and Brit Hadesa is Matthew 12 to 13, and Hebrews 8, 9, and 10. And um, I could open floor for our guest members to give their insight of this Torah portion. Please be free and bring what you have found. Right, let's start off with a word of prayer. Father, we just Amen. thank you for this word. We thank you for your Torah portion. We thank you, Father, that you teach us out of your word. And we thank you, Father, that all the things that are said are directed to people's hearts so that we can know you better, so that we can seek out the richness of this beautiful gift that you've given us. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Amen. <clears throat> John, would you like to start with today's um, Exodus? Should we, should, we, should we do it? I think we should do it in, um, in order. Maybe we start with Exodus. Sure. Sure, we can a little bit. Um, so, I guess there's just a couple of things because we don't have that much time anyway. But one of the things that I, I noticed is, uh, first of all, it was a, uh, everyone is to bring a free will offering to build this. And uh, a lot of times I think we get all caught up in the tithing and then the sacrifice and everything else. But in building this, it was the free will offering. And again, um, I, I think that applies to us. When we come before him, he wants us to bring a free will offering to him. He wants our love free will offered to him. He doesn't want uh, uh, demands. He doesn't, you know, he says, I, I, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, right? So he, he wants us to love him out of the goodness of our heart. Um, uh, the second thing that I saw uh, was he said that he would meet them from above the mercy seat. And again, that's a picture to me of who he is, because he is merciful. He, he, he's been merciful the whole time. So much of the time, especially coming out of the, uh, the, the New Testament church, um, we, we picture that. And, and actually, that kind of comes from the teaching of Marcion back in the second century and stuff, that that, that the God of the New Testament was, was good and the God of the Old Testament was evil. But that's really not the way that it is. He has been merciful from the very beginning. You can go back and, and read time and time again where he says that he's merciful. Um, the next thing that I saw, and this is in uh, uh, 2539, it says, he, it says to make it according to the pattern. And this is, I think, another very important thing. You know, I, I've kind of been in construction and farming uh, pretty well my whole life. Um, you know, and I've built several buildings where I, the rafters were hand framed, for instance. And when when you're doing that, when you're when you're building your rafters, you have a you do what you call a pattern rafter and you draw everything out according to that pattern, because if you do one, cut it use that one for the next one and cut it. By the time you get to the end, it's, it's, it's different. It's all messed up. And when you're building, you want it to be correct. And that's, yeah. that's the thing that Yah desired. He wanted it built exactly like the one that was in heaven. In, yeah. in uh, Revelation eleven nineteen, it talks about the, the ark that's in yeah. heaven. So, so he wants us it, to it, build it, this according to the pattern in heaven. And and so if I may just add there something, John. It's like if your foundation is one centimeter off, when you're starting to put the roof on, it's five centimeters off, or ten, or twenty. Uh, and you know, so just ex 
it just makes it worse and worse as you as you go up. Anyway, yeah, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I know I was talking to another uh, friend of mine one time, and he said, "Well, uh, the concrete guys came in and they didn't do it exactly right." Well, the concrete guys never do it exactly right, <laughs> and I've poured concrete. And it's never exactly right because concrete doesn't do what you want it to do always. And and uh, uh, I asked, I said, well, didn't you re-square it after you started so that, you know, because I, I built on, on crooked foundations before, but you have to lay out your foundation then, maybe a little bit off, but then you have to, when you start to build, you have to square it back up. And I think that's this picture. We have to get square with, yeah. We need to be building solid on that foundation. Um, a verse that just came to my mind is 1 Corinthians 3, right? Paul says we have to build on that foundation, and that foundation is Yahusha, right? Amen. Amen. Build on that with gold, silver, and precious stones, hay, wood, and stubble, right? Amen. And, and, and I mean, you know, when we go through the fire. Sorry, John. Sorry for interrupting you. But when we go through the, this passage, all these passages, in fact, we see little segments of Yahusha right there, right? Like, for instance, in verse 30 of, of 25, you know, you'll set upon the table the showbread before me always. Well, we know he's the bread of life in John 6, 35. So, you know, it's, it's like all these things can relate back. And, and it's just so nice when you know the Messiah and who he is. And then you can relate back to all these things that we read. because. Let's face it, uh, when we were in the Jesus Church, this was a very monotonous thing to read, through, a very difficult thing as well. I think Carla said it as well. You know, you go through these books and, wow, man, you know, there's not much to draw you back again, you know. Anyway, you can you continue, John. Well, no, I, I, I think you're exactly right. Uh, uh, that is, that's the foundation. We What we learn Right. So, so uh, I've heard of stories about missionaries going out on the mission field. Right. And uh, many times they would uh, kind of start in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. But, but when you, when you use the New Testament and then you go back and you see the pattern that that was. Right. So yeah. again, that's this picture. So the New Testament lays stuff out differently, but the Old Testament sets the pattern. Right. So now we yeah. we get the full picture now. And that's one of the things, you know, when we start building, like I read through this and I'm like, man, you can have I, I would have how would how would you build that based on the words? I need a drawing, you know, yeah. measurements and a draw, I, you know, that. Yeah. But the words. Wow. You know, and, and maybe maybe uh, Moses was uh, given the, the oh, picture yeah. in his oh, head, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and so that it was oh, done yeah. everything according to that. Oh, yeah. And so uh, another thing that, that uh, I found interesting is, is the art goes in the most holy place. So you have the holy place, and then you have the most holy place. Yeah. And I was so thinking, so where, where are we now? We're in uh, 26 at the end of 26. Yeah, that's, that's, that's in the end of 26. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. I was just kind no of problem. going no, no, that's good. Notes. That's good. good. Go ahead, Lois. Look. Oh, oh, oh no. you're, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, she was just stretched in for something, John. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so, but but uh, what, is, what, uh, what about us? You know, uh, how does that apply to us? Is, you know, we know the ark is a picture of our heart, which is right. the most holy place. And so then right, the rest right. of it, we're holy, but our heart is to be most holy. Is, is this Well, you know, that came up with Lois's book the other day when we were discussing it afterwards, right? Then, uh, you know, like, what is the inner court and what is the outer court? Is the outer court maybe that is trampled upon? Is that maybe your body? You know, it's mm. just things like that, right? That's that sort of, uh, we, we sort of knowing. If there's right. anybody that, that would like to add, James, uh, Dan, uh, anybody else, uh, Lois, uh, Sherry, just, uh, just, just, just put the, the hand up and then we'll come to you immediately. Or just All right, talk. James, carry on. James, yeah, just talk. <laughs> James, go for it. All right. So I shared some of this last night, but I thought it was relevant to our discussion regarding right. the ark. We can right. see that in Exodus 25, 11, the Torah states that you shall overlay it with pure gold inside mm -hmm. and outside shall you overlay it 
and you shall make it a molding of gold around it. So the ark was the same on the inside as it was on the, I'm sorry, it was the same on the outside as it was on the inside. Mm -hmm. Teach us that the outside must match our insides. Mm -hmm. So any disciple whose inside is not as his outside is not a true disciple. In other words, we should be golden both inside and out, and that our actions should match the hidden intentions of our heart. Like you were yeah. referring that our heart is the Ark of the Covenant. And I'd never heard that before, but I really do like that. Yeah, that's great. That is beautiful. It's not, uh, not an easy task, James. No, it's not. <laughs> well, I suppose all of us, you know, I mean, come on, we... Uh... We all got this fleshly thing and, and we just got to try and press in to, to bring Yah's holiness out, right? Um, absolutely. So so I have just one more thing that's, to, that's to lovely, add James. to this. Thanks, God. Yeah. yeah, go for it, John. To, to add to this, I want to read from 2 Corinthians, starting in verse 14 of chapter 6. And I'm going to read through the first verse of chapter 7. And because yeah. I think this applies to, to, to putting it into our heart. Yeah. It says, do not be mismatched with unbelievers, for what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? Or what agreement does Mashiach have with Belal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And what agreement does Elohim's sanctuary have with idols? For we are the sanctuary of the living Elohim. As he said, I will dwell among them, and walk among them. I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and be separate, says Yahweh. Touch no unclean thing, and I will welcome you. I will be a father to you, and you will be sons and daughters to me, says Yahweh. Therefore, dear friends, since we have such promises, let us cleanse ourselves from every impurity of the flesh and ruach, completing our sanctification in the fear of Elohim. Mm. I'll turn there it over to you. There we go. Okay, so um, I don't, has anybody else got something uh, in Exodus? Uh, see, Gabriella, you had your hand up? Yeah, actually, I found something interesting. Actually, I was heard, in, heard, heard about a uh, long time ago. There's a project called Project 314. And uh, the guy's name is Andy Hoy, and he's an engineer, and he actually recreated uh, Tabernacle exactly by, uh, by how it is depicted in, in, in Bible. And I would love to share um, this, if I can just get that. Technical thing to work, just a second, yeah. just a second. No, it should work. Is it a video? Or what? No, 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 just her page. So it's project 314. And mm -hmm. we can see the the original shoebox version. And in, in his engineering uh, mind, he created and it became like looking like this, like, uh, you know, the slosh over the plate, you know, um, like a flat earth model that, that it, it's a round, round version. I would recommend to go to his page, uh, Project 314, Tabernacle Research and Restoration, because I found it really interesting and what else is what I think would be nice to know if somebody who understand electricity that as uh, James said that everything should be gold, that uh, if you do electric circuit in the uh, like um, mapping, same, same mapping as altar and menorah and showbread, a table and so on what it would be doing in an electricity way that i would like to know someday but that's just me <laughs> thank you guys okay so um 
in in chapter 27, I, I came across something on verse 20. And you shall command at the children of Yasharal that they bring you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always in the tabernacle of the assembly without the veil, which is before the testimony. So here we've got three things. We've got olive oil beaten. We've got light. And uh, we've got the lamp. Now, Psalm 119, 105, um, that says that your word is a lamp unto my path and a light, and, uh, sorry, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, so here we've got, but then what is the olive oil? Well, Yahusha, uh, Song of Songs, one verse three says, your name is this ointment brought forth. That's what it says in the KJV. But if you look into that word ointment, it actually means olive oil or oil. So your name is this oil brought forth. Could mean that he's the beaten olive oil. The name is the beaten olive oil. And then if you take it back to Matthew 25 verse 1, when we get the 10 virgins, five foolish, five wise. Well, the foolish ones don't have the oil. So um, just, just an analogy sort of brought back, well, you might have the lamp, but without the oil, you don't have the light, and you also don't have um, maybe the name. And I think that's came through in the testimonies that we've just heard of, of the people. When you start realizing Yahusha is the name, when you start reading the, the Sefer, there's so much more information that comes your way, and you, and you get this new renewed love for the word so um that's that's what also stood out for me in this reading today um it's now so we got we got we got about 25 minutes or so left um should we go then to the half torah or should is there anybody else that would like to add anything to uh, exodus right now anybody No? All right. So should we start off with First Kings then? Yes, please. So where were we? First Kings five, was it? Or was it? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was five and six. The tail end of five and the first part of six. I don't remember the exact okay. verses, but all right. So um yeah, would you like to see have you got anything there, John? Uh, the only thing that I thought of is 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 Solomon is to build the temple, and I I I've looked and I I don't know where the passage is. I know it's there. That that uh, uh, this was a this temple was a place for his name. This wasn't a, a yes, that's, for, that's for, in for, verse nineteen of five. Uh, okay. One Kings five verse nineteen. Okay, so so I, I thought I read it and then I couldn't find it. I'm sorry about that, but that's I think that's the important aspect of this whole thing. I mean, yeah, it was he doesn't need that physical building. It was a place right. for his name, you know. How's his name? That's, yeah. To me, is the important. And, you know, part. So let's bring that back then to the Mashiach. Let's bring that back to the ruach that was given to us by the Mashiach. The uh, uh, the 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 Bav Hay part, if you like, right, of his name, right, Yod Hey Bav Hey, the, the the breath that was given by the hand, the Father, and the breath that was given by the Son. Then, um, then you see, well, okay, so what are we? Where's the in? Where's the? Where's this inner? This inner man, this inner temple. Well, what does it house? It houses his name, right? We need his name in our heart. Don't go fill yourself with uh, RNA vaccines and stuff because that's going to affect. <laughs> that's going to affect the um, the uh, the temple, right? Um, and and I mean, let's face it, Solomon maybe was on his own pluck to to build some of these things. Um, like for instance, with a U, with a hewn stone, which is abomination to Yah. I know that the word says that they didn't hew them 
in the site of building, but still, you know, um, uh, a tool came upon that stone. So um, it is a bit of a problem. Lois, let's hear what you have to say. Well, that's an interesting thought. I mean, there, there are contaminants now that we are being asked to put in our body, but there are contaminants that we voluntarily put in our body, that we voluntarily consume or whatever. And we, I mean, with the eyes, there's more than one gate with which to consume. So it's not just the mouth, but the eye. And so we, if yeah. you yeah, yeah. consume the world and put it in our heart, put it in our, our container, our vessel that should contain him, then we yeah. have issues with more than just chemical. But he wants to right. be the all in all. He wants to yes. fill all of us, all of our vessel with him, all of the things. Yeah, yeah. And so that's an interesting thing. And then you go back to, was it James who said gold? Yes. I was just about to say that. And out, when you think of it, if we've put all of his stuff inside, we're inside and out shining of him. Right. That's a really cool thought. And then you bring it back to uh, Revelation where he says, I counsel you to buy of me gold refined in fire. You know? So yeah. all those and, things are so beautiful, right? Because what is the gold refined in fire? You know, what, what, uh, what are, we, are we heaping up for ourselves treasures in heaven? where moth and rust can uh, tarnish them and thieves can break in and steal. Or... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, just, just, this, just last night, I, was, I saw a thing on the internet asking about Lent. Is it in the Bible? And I, and I, and I, did, I said, no, not really. But I said, if you lend, and then I did the scripture verses about lending to a brother and not expecting to get, or, or not even charging him any interest and stuff like that. And I was all, always thought that if you lent it, you were to lend it with the expectation that it may never come back. So mm -hmm. there's so much to, to how we conduct our lives. It's, it's not just one thing. Amen. And, and what does Yahusha say, right? He says, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out, right? Wow. So that's 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 what you're looking at. Well, that's what you're bringing yeah. in, Lois. That's a yeah. very brilliant point. If your hand yeah. causes you to sin, cut it off, right? Yeah. Is that figuratively or, you know, I mean, if that's the case, I would be blind and not have any arms or any feet. But that's, those are the things that he says, right? So if yeah, your feet true. causes you to sin, right? Well, are you walking towards sin? Are you walking away from sin? You know, it's because the lust of the flesh, is, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's ever flesh. pressing at us. It's yeah. it's bombarding us all over. So, and I think you know we can bring this name to to this discussion as well, because when we have the holy of holies within us, i.e., the soul and your 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 intellect, your who your being, your who you are, your personality, um, let's infuse that with a name. Well, when you infuse that with a name, you do not want to do the things that you used to do. You, you, you sort of, it's, it's like, I want to be holy. I want to try at least be holy unto you. Now, I mean, having said all that, it's so, it, it, and, and that's what James, I think, brought up um, is let's get the outside like the inside. Well, um, <laughs> that's a task by itself right and i mean that is what we're striving to do uh and that is what the beauty about discussion these discussions is and the things like we've heard you know carla when you were giving your testimony i can just see how yah works with you because i see that person within you i see this bubbly person who's jumping up and down and you you can't you're not the person to sit in uh under somebody's teaching and that and and be bored to death you just you the person that well when i'm listening to the music well it got get cut off yeah but then it starts there and another question's answered and wow bah, 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 you know so uh, and that was the best part you know and i think that's how yah works with all of us because every single one of us has a personality and he he works with that he he knows us he loves us he knows us and he and, you know, the, the thought about this whole thing with the, with the gold and, and with the name and, and everything that we've been discussing and John, what he's written, Lois, what she said, 
comes once again and I'm thinking, well, how great is that darkness when you can't see the deception that you're in? Which Yahweh also says, uh, Yahusha says to us, you know, how, how great is that just darkness when the light that you have is so dark? And, um, and, 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 you know, well, okay, the point is, let's get, the, let's get his name first. Of all, and then let's cultivate something out of the word that we can have oil in the lamp so that we don't have to fear when we're waiting and waiting and waiting and, uh, you know, we're not going to fall away. Carla's got something to say. Carla. Yeah, I was struggling trying to raise my hand and couldn't find the button. <laughs> but, yeah, um, when Lois said that, like, how we absorb everything, right, all of the gates to our temple, right, it made me think about how if your eye be single, then your whole body is full of light, right? So if yeah. we are, but that's exactly the, sense, the same. That's exactly the same verse. Uh, just a bit later, where he says what I just said about the darkness, isn't it? So it's a confirmation right. of, right? Okay, carry on. Sorry, Carla. No, just that. That for a while. I mean, we've discussed before. What is what is it to worship, right? To worship is uh, to me worshiping is not just singing the songs or praying. Uh, thankfulness yeah. it, it has to do with what are you paying attention to what are you um you know what what is your focus on so with all of our senses what are we listening to what are we looking at what are we doing with our hands you know the the holy of holies if 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 through the eye or through the ear comes the light into our heart and then we'll be full of light it's gonna reflect what you guys have been talking about Whatever's in my holy of holies is what's going to reflect outwardly. So it's not so much about what, I mean, it's, it's a common going kind of thing, right? It's a door. The Tao it is, is Yahusha. What you take in is what's going to come out and what's inside. I don't, what is it? Out of the mouth speaks the heart. So we need, we need to consume it all that has to okay. do with him. Definitely. Hallelujah. That's awesome. Thanks, Carla. Uh, uh, okay, so we've got three hands up. Let's go, John. Also, I, I uh, was thinking, tail, tailing off of this, uh, Matthew 23, verse 27, he's speaking to the, to the, says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside you are full of dead man's bones and every impurity. In the same way, on the outside, you seem righteous to people, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. And it says in Matthew 5, right, verse 20, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. D uh, Dan. Yeah, Dan, you there? Sorry about that. It's Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, sorry. It, this makes me think of what Yahushua said is the greatest commandment. And that is love Yahweh with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your body, all of your soul, and all of your strength. He wants all of it. He doesn't want us to close him up in two little rooms of our house. He wants the whole thing, you know, and it's all his temple. So we can't restrict him to what area of his temple he can be in. It has to be the whole thing, all of it. You just said, you're either with me or you're against me, one or the other. It's either all in or all out. And there's no lukewarm middle ground. Yeah. So. And I think that's what James was, you know, the, the analogy of the, of the gold, right? It's, it's like every corner. It's not, it's not just you know, one side, or it's every corner, every bit of it, but there is no wood to be seen. Kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I feel that's true worship. When you Thank give you. him all of your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength, that's true worship. Yeah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you very much. James. If I could, if I could just oh, start in before James. Yes. Uh, going off what Jennifer says, is that he wants us to worship him 
in spirit and in truth and just all of us like giving all of our body to him to worship and not keeping a piece over here because we want to do this because this is what we want he wants us to give it all to him hmm. okay great james that's exactly what I was thinking. I, <laughs> I meditate on John 3.30 a lot. You know, wow. I must decrease so he can increase. And whether it be fasting from food or any of our fleshly desires, it is so important to do that. And somebody I heard once say, when we fast, for food as an example, it is burning and melting away our fat as an offering to Yahuwah, like it would have been done on the tabernacle. Uh, so wow, I just thought that, that is, was really incredible. Yeah, that is incredible. That is incredible. Eh? So you become, you actually become the burnt offering. Beautiful. Correct. Yeah. Thanks, James. Bracha. Is that right? Bracha? Yeah, it's right. <laughs> uh, Colossians 3.23, I put that in the chat already. And whatsoever you do is heartily as to Yahuwah and not unto men, knowing that you that of Yah you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve Yahuwah, the Messiah, Messiah. And I believe and do also that it is our worship. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's not singing only, and you know. No, so. <laughs> no you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, it's a, there like are James contributions from noise and so on. Uh, it's great too. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you know what James just said really is just so beautiful, right? I mean, you fast, you burn the fat. It's just like burning the fat of the of of the rams or or, or whatever that the priests were supposed to do, right? Um, yeah. You know, uh, another thought that just comes to mind within this Melakim uh, Roshon uh, or First Kings, um, uh, chapter six, verse eleven. It says, "In the word of Yahweh came to El Sholomah, saying, Concerning this house which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and guard it all my commandments to walk in them, then." I will perform if my word with you, which I spoke unto El David, your father, and I will dwell among the children of Yasharel and will not forsake my people Yasharel. Now, you know, I mean, isn't that if we, if we bring that back to what we've just been talking about now, um, is, I mean, obviously they didn't do these things. They didn't stick to the, uh, the statutes of Yah. Uh, Sholoma went whoring after his uh, woman's Elohim, and, um, and, and there was a whole lot of monstrous, well, horrible things happening, right? And, uh, and, 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 you know, in his time, the kingdoms were separated. Well, you know, the, the king, or rather, Yasharel was separated, the northern and the south. And then, I mean, all these other things come from this. And, uh, and, and um, you know, if we just have to draw this back now to this new living temple, which we are, um, it, 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 it sort of, you know, are we doing these things like we just talked about? Are we, are we, are we counseling? Are we, are we buying from him gold refined in fire? Are we adoring our temple? with good things and not bad things? Are we from the inside as well, lining ourselves with Yah's good gifts, his word, worship, all these things, which make us more acceptable to him to, to use. Um, and, and, and uh, well, let, let's get to John. John, did you have something to say? Oh, you didn't. Okay, sorry. So yeah, so so uh, you know, my my thought would be that is uh, uh, walk in them, walk in them, you know, and and I mean that, that counts for us to do. We say, okay, Shema Yasharel. Well, we hear and we do. Who is Yasharel? We are Yasharel as well. 
not because we're special, well, we are special, but not because uh, we are different from anybody, but we, have, we are believers in the Messiah. And when we are believers in the Messiah, you have the right to the promises that Yashorel had. Uh, I see Mia's got her hand up, so please, Mia, help us. Already read this scripture from Jeremiah three sixteen. Have you? Sorry, I had to go away. Okay, I I got this a few days ago, and it was interesting that we're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. So I just want to read this scripture. I'm not going to interpret it, but just want to share it. Okay, so this is Jeremiah 3, verses 16 and 17, and you can read the context if you like. I think this is a prophecy about the new heaven and new earth or the millennium. I don't, I'm not quite sure myself. Okay, and it shall, it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, says Yahuwah, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Mm -hmm. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of Yahuwah, and all the nations, nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of Yahuwah, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil heart. So, yeah, amen. Just want, yeah, just want to share that. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's very apt because. Um, uh, in my, what we were talking about is this, this temple that Moshe built, well, well that he was the architect, well, Yah was the architect, obviously, but that he built for Yah to house his name in, was a very, uh, in Yah's standards, it was very, uh, uh, how can I say, um, uh, it was rugged. It was um, it, it 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 wasn't very glorious. It was of of it was of materials that could that could uh, degenerate. Put it that way, you know, skins of animals. I mean, how long do skins of animals last? You know, you can you, you know they can't last for thousands of years, uh, for example. So so that's very much like our bodies right our bodies are also very frivolous i mean one little virus and then you're gone bye bye see you or um you know you got hurt uh, or a bear uh, you, you're encountering a bear and i mean uh, you know he he tears you apart we're not we're not made very strong beings um very much like the moses temple now did he want a temple that was built out of stone which will last forever. I don't think so. I don't think that was ever really the plan. I think the plan is that when the Messiah comes, well, then the temple changes. It, it can't be the stone wall that everybody goes to and prays and puts a little prayers into the wall. That's not what he wanted. He wanted uh, this mobile uh, tabernacle and he wanted it very, um, I'm looking for a word, but I, I don't know, I can't, I, 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 it escapes me. Um, uh, it's crude, it's a crude, sorry, Lois, you're gonna help me. Said in which, and, and there's a tie in here, because the mobile temple that he wanted, or, 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 the, or that's us. Mm. So he did, so he built them, he showed them, and there was a stone one built. And if you think what Maya just said about it will be destroyed. I mean, really, her verse is where we are today, where they're not acknowledging. You read her, if I could just have her verse brought back, it would be like, wow, that is exactly where we are today. And we're in these mobile temples. And what do they want to do? They want to bring back another temple when he's given us this, this temple. This is yes. the one he wants to inhabit all along. Amen. Really, I don't even think he wanted the temple of skins, although there is an ark in the in the in the heavens. I understand it's that. A type, but, right. It's a type. But yeah. I wonder if we're not that pattern somehow and we just can't see it. 
Yeah, no, no, no. That, I agree with you 100%, Lewis. That is exactly what I see. Um, I'm not saying I'm, I'm 100% right, though, when I say that. I'm just saying that, uh, that you know, we are uh, this mobile, rudimentary um, uh, temple. Uh, we have all issues with, it's not like perfect, it's withering away. It's, uh, but we have the Ruach Elohim within us, and uh, that makes it different, right? And I think coming back to Mia, the way that I understand this is that, um, well, the Ark, the Ark, since Jeremiah never really had the Ark, of, uh, it didn't have the Holy of Holies. Well, it didn't have the, 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 the Ark inside of it, right? Because uh, at that time it, it was hidden. And when it was rent, when Yahusha uh, was, was, well, died, um, then everybody could see, well, listen, these guys were lying to us. These guys, these priests were, were making as if there was uh, this ark inside of it. And why do they do that? Why do people want to build the stone ark? Well, you only want to build this temple, sorry. Why do they want to build it? They want to build it because they want to be in charge and it makes it a religion. Right. So, you know, we all have got and, and this is, I think, something that that uh, that we can bring into what James said. And, and, and it's and it's beautiful. Right. We all want a place in the sun and uh, our and our desires sometimes are not yours desires. And uh, we want to live it out no matter what. Right. What is the cost? Where is it, you know, and we, that's what we've got to keep on thinking. Is it yours will or is it my will? Is it, you know, John, have you got something to say? Well, he, uh, I think exactly. We all want to melt our fat away, as James said, but we don't want to do the effort of fasting to make it happen. And I think that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, well, maybe we want to get maybe, into maybe me more than you, John. Pardon? I say maybe me more than you. <laughs> yeah, do we do we have time to get into uh, Matthew 13 or not? I think let's do it. We've got 10 minutes left, uh, but I think we've got theoretically five minutes. So maybe maybe if you've got something to say, we'll end at that. And then maybe if somebody else has got to add something add, to add to you. Well, I, I do. I have no idea if I can get it done in five minutes, but we'll, right. I'll, right. I'll just hit my, my notes and not expand upon it. So. Right. So anyway, uh, if people have read uh, Matthew 13, uh, keeping this all in context, because it is one fluid chapter. And of course, Matthew is, is kind of our guidebook for how to live our life. That's, that's the book of Matthew, shows us how to live our life. And so um, without reading the chapter, first of all, we, we see in the parable, um, we have the birds that come. Along the, along the pathway, and, and they come to steal. Who do those birds represent? They represent demons, because we know that in other parts of Scripture. The second group have no root, right? So when the sun comes out, it scorches them. The third, it's the worries of the world. It's the money, it says there. And so that takes us to Matthew 6, 24. You cannot serve two masters, only, only one. And when we try to put the two together, it doesn't work. Again, yeah. back to the mixture, back to First Corinthians or Second Corinthians six. All of those things yeah. land. And John, if I may just add to that, that's why a lot of people do not keep the Sabbath because Mammon gets in the way and they cannot let that go. Right? And I'm not uh, by by saying that I'm not judging. What I am doing is I'm just saying, guys, that you know, don't put Mammon first. Absolute, absolute. So then, then we see. Uh, at the end of that, uh, uh, it what lands in the good soil? You have 160, 30 fold, right? So what that says is if the if if there's something in us, if we're the good soil, we need to be producing fruit. Mm -hmm. If we're not, we're one of the other three. We need to realize that. Are we producing fruit? Have we tilled coming, our field properly? Coming back to what James said with the gold, right? Right. 
Exactly. And I mean, as a, as you know, I, I actually, some years ago I had, I farmed a 40 and uh, uh, believe me, there was all four of these in that same field multiple years in a row. I mean, the one side hill was gravel. And I mean, the, it would look so good at first and then it would just burn up. You could have a spot along the, along the edge where the weeds would overtake it. Right. Okay. And, and yeah. so, so what that looks like though, is, is where the, the corn would grow up, but then you'd have the weeds come up. The corn is still right. there and it looks right. like there might even be a near there, but there's nothing. Right. It doesn't right. produce. Right. So, so look, we, I just want to, I just want to put a time here. We are, uh, we've got a few, a few minutes, maybe two, okay. two minutes. Left. Okay. I'll zoom here. Okay. So now <laughs> the enemy sowed weeds in the field, right? And so uh, uh, they're growing up together until the harvest. Uh, right. What does that look like? Stop and think what that looks like. Uh, the kingdom uh, is, is, is plants the seed of the mustard seed, right? And it grows up. But the birds of the air come and they nest in its branches. All this is fluid now. And who, again, the birds of the air represent uh, demonic forces. Then what happens? Mm -hmm. They bring in leaven. That's the very next thing that comes in. Leaven is sin that's mixed throughout. So, mm -hmm. so we have to realize we don't want that sin leavened in our life. Um, next thing we have, the, it's, it's hidden from the foundation of the world. These are mysteries, once again, that are hidden. And I won't mm -hmm. read uh, verses, the, the next part here, but it's very, very powerful. Uh, I guess I'll just sum it up and say that we need to sell all we have and buy Yahusha. We need to sell everything. Hallelujah. Sell everything. And, buy. and that comes back once again to what James said. <laughs> so, James, thank you very much for what you shared. It really uh, has been a thread throughout this whole meeting and it's blessed us all. So, I think by, with this, we're going to um, end this meeting because of time's sake, unfortunately. Um, yes. uh, John, would, would, you, would you like to pray quickly? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come before you, thanking you and praising you. And Father, I do pray that you'd help us to apply what we have learned, help us to live according to, to what you've laid before us. You, you teach us and you love us and you have mercy. You've always had mercy for your people and for all of mankind, not wanting any to perish, but all come to, to the understanding, the knowledge and, and, and the, the gift of, of eternal life through your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Amen. shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. And so much. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.